Hi, I'm Pat Prokop, and welcome to Savannah, Georgia, Heavenly Backyard Astronomy, found on savannahpat.name. A question that was asked, do you really need a big telescope to get good astrophotography? Well, it doesn't hurt. I mean, these big guys do a great job. This is the 11-inch Celestron uh, schmidt Cassegrain telescope. However, a smaller scope can do just as good, do, but do you really even need a, a smaller telescope? Can you use a lens from a camera? Well, the answer to that is coming right up. So what about a smaller telescope, say something like this? This is a, uh, uh, the Orion ED80T uh, uh, telescope, and it's a little 3.1 inches, or uh, what is it, 80 millimeters uh, circumference with the mirror, uh, not the mirror, but the lens on the front. And this actually does a fantastic job. It's really good. But do you really need this? The answer is not necessarily. Here's what you need, though. You need a lens, obviously, and a camera. Those are two important aspects of it. And another one is a tripod or a uh, device to hold the camera and the uh, lens. To tr now, if you're not using a tracking mount, you're only going to get about five seconds worth of uh, imagery, imagery before the uh, stars start to trail uh, because of the rotation of the Earth. But on this system here, this is the AVX mount, and uh, I have it polar aligned, and now that it's all set up, and once I point the camera to the target, uh, the system will track the rotation of the Earth, hence keeping the camera locked on the star or the nebula, whatever you're shooting, and you get some good, clean, round stars. And I can track for one minute up to two minutes easily with this system. How clean, how round, and how great are the images? I think they're pretty good. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at some of the pictures that I got from the uh, system. There's the camera, the Altair Hypercam 294C ProTech. Uh, there's the Altair Canon EOS lens adapter with the spacer for the um, uh, what the correct width between the camera lens and the camera and to insert the filter which I have in there, the uh, Altair quad band filter. Uh, this is the lens itself from the Canon camera. This is the Canon EF70 200mm f 4L, USM, whatever that means, uh, telephoto zoom lens. And this is the, uh, the mount, the equatorial mount, the Celestron AVX mount, uh, ready to go. Let's take a look at some of the pictures. First of all, uh, I took a picture of the planet Jupiter a couple of weeks, about a week ago, and there you can see some of the moons. This is with the, you know, this is not a telescope. Uh, anyway, I wanted to see a wider view, a field of view, and that's why I uh, got this uh, system. Uh, so there's Jupiter. Um, the Andromeda Galaxy, excellent view of the Andromeda Galaxy, and there you can see uh, here the great view of this. I believe this is a two-hour exposure, and I was taking um, two-minute subs in this one. Uh, but that's the Andromeda Galaxy. Here's another one coming up, the uh, the Pleiades itself uh, picture. Uh, that one's a little bit zoomed in. I think I got a, a even more zoomed-in one here, and. Uh, Let's say this is the uh, what you see in the camera zoomed all the way out at 70 millimeters. I know the other one, uh, this one back here, uh, that was zoomed in at uh, that was a um, 100 millimeter, uh, actually about 200 millimeter zoom there, and uh, then this was the uh, 70 millimeter zoom. All right, and um, time out. It's raining outside. I'm gonna have to stop this and cover up the scope. Well, I'm back. I just put the cover back on the telescopes. Uh, this came out of nowhere, these showers. That's where I am, right there, just south of the city of Savannah. And some light showers all of a sudden just popped up and are zooming across the area. Well, anyway, that's how it goes. Typical life around here. Anyway, where was I? I was back at the Rosette Nebula. That's what it was. And uh, let's take a look at this. And there you can see, this is with that uh, the lens. This is not a telescope. Uh, there is the Rosette Nebula and other nebulosity nearby, and lots of stars, as you can see. It's one of the arms of the Milky Way. Um, the next picture, I think, is a little bit closer. Zoom on this, and I can zoom in even more. Isn't that gorgeous? That, from a, a non-telescope, uh, these were 60-minute subs that I was taking with the, um, with the system. And then last night, it was supposed to have been cloudy all night, but a few breaks in the clouds did appear, 
And uh, so I uh, opened up the telescope to see if I can get anything. I, was, I wanted to get the Heart Nebula and the Soul Nebula. And uh, so uh, this is it right here. And um, uh, there you can see uh, the Heart Nebula. I only got you know, it was 18 minutes worth of data out of two and a half hours or three hours of trying with the clouds passing through that. And there you have the Heart Nebula and the uh, right here and the uh, Soul Nebula here and this uh, double star cluster over here. Um, again, it was supposed to have been cloudy all night, but I had a few breaks in the clouds, but I had the system going for about two and a half, almost three hours, and out of that three hours, I ended up with only 18 minutes worth of data to use, hence that's why this is so grainy. But you get the idea of the uh, expanse, and I had to really crop this down too, uh, due to the um, light pollution from the reflection off the clouds and the moisture in the atmosphere on a scale of 0 to 10, where 10 is uh, ideal weather conditions, uh, viewing conditions, and 0, of course, you can't see a thing. Uh, it was only a 4 last night, so I got this. Uh, again, that uh, Altair uh, quad band filter really brings out the nebulosity in some of these objects here in the uh, moderately light polluted area that I live on the south side of Savannah. Well, Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, unless you need rain, clear skies. Don't forget to like my page, 